Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. I mentioned in Wednesday's devotion that this last Monday and Tuesday, I was at our district's Fall Pastors Conference. I'm going to spell for you the name of the town where this conference took place. And then I want you to say how you would pronounce this word. Here's the name of the town. This is how it's spelled. N-O-R-F-O-L-K. And I'll say it again. N-O-R-F-O-L-K. If you were to pronounce that town's name based on its spelling, how would you say it? Norfolk, right? That's how most people would think to pronounce the name of this town based on the spelling. Norfolk. And that's how most people pronounce the name of this town, not just throughout the country, but even here in Nebraska. People will look at it and say, that's Norfolk, Nebraska. But if you know the town, if you grew up in the town, if you know the story, you know that the name of this town is not pronounced Norfolk. It's pronounced Norfolk. And there's a story behind this. Uh, back in the day when the early Nebraska settlers were forming this town, and they submitted the name for their town. And I think you did that through the post office. It was through some government agency. I know that. Um, they said, let's name our town Norfolk, which was short for North Fork of the River. And so they submitted the paperwork, submitted the name for their town. And then someone in the government, I think it was the post office, looked at this form and said, oh, those silly Nebraskan prairie settlers, they don't know how to spell Norfolk and change the R to an L. And from now on, the world looks at the spelling of the name of this town and says, that's Norfolk. But the people who know the story, who know the town itself, who grew up in the town, say no, this is Norfolk. In this Sunday's Old Testament reading, and this is what we're going to focus on in our sermon this Sunday as well, we have the account in Genesis where Jacob wrestles all night with God. And that's what we're going to talk about in the sermon is the wrestling part of the story. Well, when Jacob is done wrestling with God, God changes his name from Jacob to Israel. The name Jacob is Hebrew for one who grabs the heel. Because when he and his twin brother Esau were born, uh, as Esau came out first, there was Jacob's hand grabbing his brother's heel. And that phrase, one who grabs the heel, became an idiom, slang, if you will, for liar, cheater, deceiver, sinner. That's Jacob's name. And can you imagine his parents giving him that name, liar, cheater, sinner? The world looks at Jacob throughout his life and says, that's what you are to us. You're no good. You're just a liar, a cheater, a sinner. Not worth my time, not worth my effort. But in today's Old Testament reading is, or not today's, Sunday's Old Testament reading, as Jacob wrestles with God, God looks at Jacob and says, that might be what the world sees. But that's not what I see. I see Israel, which is Hebrew for one who wrestles with God. One who struggles with God. One who knows God personally and intimately. A child of God. God looks at Jacob and he says, the world might look at you and see someone no good, not worth the time or effort. 
but I look at you and I see my own dear precious child whom I love. The same can be said of us. The world looks at us and says, you're no good. You're not worth the time. You're not worth the effort. But in Christ, God looks at us and says, you are precious. You are mine. You are worth dying for. And Jesus goes to the cross. And all those flaws, all those sins, all of our Jacob moments are forgiven. Are washed away. Canceled. And we are made, we are transformed into being Israel. And to being God's own dear, precious child whom he loves. As the world looks at you, as you look at yourself in the mirror, maybe there's times that you see only the Jacob side, the sinner side. And it truly is there. I mean, Jacob, he lives up to his name for a good portion of uh, his story in Genesis. We are flawed. We are sinners. But in Christ, we are God's dear children. And so as you look at yourself in the mirror, remember that you are loved by God. You are worth dying for. And then as you look at your neighbor, remember the same thing is true for them. The world might look at your neighbor. You might at times look at your neighbor and say, eh, not really worth my time. But in the eyes of God, your neighbor is precious. And now we are called to view that same neighbor in the same way. As precious, as loved by God, and worth my time. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your great love for us. That while the world, while Satan would shout at us and tell us we are worthless, we're no good. You, through your great love shown to us in Christ, say, no, you are precious to me. I love you. You are worth dying for. Teach us, Lord, to live not as Jacob's, not as sinners, but as your own dear precious children. And teach us, Lord, to value and love one another in the same way that you value and love us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. It's Friday. It's a weekend here in Aurora. It's homecoming weekend. So pray God's blessings on your homecoming weekend. And hope to see you Sunday. Amen.